Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard and today in this video we're going to be talking about the acid and alkaline solution and how that can help you block dihydrotestosterone or DHT which can ultimately uh, well, help you with male pattern baldness and androgenetic alopecia. Now this is part of a three-part mini-series so we've already looked at the topical ways that you can uh, apply to your scalp to help combat hair loss. We've also looked at the internal supplements and now we're going to look at the most important one which is the acid and alkaline solution. It's going to be quite a long one uh, but we've got a lot of great information for you so make sure you pay attention. So what you're going to learn about in this video is we're just going to have a really quick brief overview of dihydrotestosterone. Then we're going to talk about the ultimate dihydrotestosterone blocker and we're going to introduce to you the acid and alkaline balance. Then we're going to talk about how to use topical blockers we're going to talk about how to alkalize your body quickly. We're going to talk about how the acid and alkaline balance relates to dihydrotestosterone. Then we'll talk about the balance of good and bad bacteria. Then we're going to talk about the delayed allergic reactions to food. And then finally, the mechanical tension of the scalp. So we've got a lot to go through, but this is good information. So let's get to it. So first, we'll just quickly go over dihydrotestosterone. So DHT is commonly believed to be the main culprit behind male pattern baldness. And just before we get into it, don't forget that every time you see a bracket with a number in there, that means that we're citing some kind of research or, or academic study or something along the lines. You can just head over down to the uh, description and then you'll be able to go and do some extra research yourself, which we do encourage, but everything that we're saying is backed by science. So DHT stands for dihydrotestosterone. And it's an androgen sex hormone that is produced from testosterone. And what happens is when the 5-alpha reductase enzyme attaches to testosterone, it creates DHT. So um, people that are prone to male pattern baldness or androgenetic alopecia, they're more sensitive to DHT. So it doesn't mean that they've got more or less of it. And we don't want to block testosterone because that can lead to a whole host of negative side effects. But what we want to do is we want to block dihydrotestosterone or 5-alpha reductase. So the ultimate DHT blocker. So we're going to introduce to you now the acid and alkaline balance. See, the problem with simply blocking dihydrotestosterone is that you're not fixing the underlying causes. You're simply reducing the amount of DHT in your body and expecting that this will help your hair. Now, although there may be less side effects when blocking DHT naturally, like we've just shown you in the past two videos with the topical and internal supplementation, uh, when compared to like things like finasteride, is still not the best way to reverse hair loss. Now, what I want to show you is a better, perhaps more effective way to do it. And we're going to be using the concept of the acid-alkaline balance. So the acid-alkaline balance. So the foods that we eat, after they've been metabolized, they leave met metabolic waste within our body. Now, depending on the type of food that we eat, the metabolic ash will either have a net acidic or net alkaline effect on our bodies. And that means that every food that we eat is going to make our bodies more acidic or more alkaline. And it's very, very important that we uh, have the correct pH in our bodies because it's going to be crucial for strong health, like because our cells, hormones and mitochondria, they need the right conditions to work effectively. Now, our natural and healthy pH is a slight alkaline at 7.4. So you remember in science, probably the, the universal indicator pH color chart, we're just slightly alkaline. And useful enzymes and hormones must have precise alkaline conditions to be effective. And destructive enzymes and hormones and diseases, they thrive in acidic conditions. So this is also true for 5-alpha reductase, which is the most effective at a pH of 5, which is acidic. And it becomes more apparent that the typical Western diet consists largely of foods that have a net acidic value. That's not to say that alkaline foods aren't included in this diet, it's just the bulk of the Western diet is acidic foods. So the so-called balanced diet that you're probably aware of, uh, that was popularized by no nutritionist, but it was popularized by the agricultural industry, uh, is known to be the pinnacle of health to the majority of the population and is heavily weighted on the acidic side. So how does this affect hair loss? So in terms of pH balance, this affects our hairlines both directly and indirectly. First, we'll discuss the indirect effects. So as our bodies become more acidic due to our food choices, diseases such as microbes and bacteria thrive. And when our bodies are coping with illnesses caused by the acidosis, our bodies don't have the energy and resources to grow hair for the purpose of conspicuous consumption. So new hair growth slowly ceases. 
Now we can turn this around and use it to our favour by alkalizing our bodies so much that diseases and bacteria simply can't survive in these conditions. The resources are now freed up for maximum potential hair growth. Now that's the indirect, now let's look at the direct effects. So acidosis directly affects the strength, thickness, coverage and colour of our hair as the body tries to maintain its ideal pH balance under the onslaught of net acidic foods it must take back parts of our body to buffer the acidity. Now remember from chemistry class that acid and alkaline cancel each other out. Uh, so crucially for us, the body buffers the acidity by leaching nutrients from less important parts of our body. Now the best way to buffer the acidity in an attempt to preserve our health is to leach nitrogen and calcium. One of the best sources of nitrogen is protein, such as the specific protein found in the head hair called keratin. This amino acid forms the majority of our hair molecule. Now the result in most people is a gradual slowing down of the rate that their hair grows. And that re results in a reduction in color, saturation, strength and thickness, and then the recession of the hairline. However, the acidosis manifests itself and these short-term symptoms should be warning signs that more severe diseases are on their way. Luckily for you, we have a simple answer. The answer is to restore the natural growth of your hair by returning your body to its natural pH. Unfortunately, or maybe it's fortunate because it's a warning sign, whenever we revert back to the acidic diet, uh, the hair soon start to suffer as the pH drops to acidic and the body must once again buffer the acidity using keratin, the thing that we just mentioned, from the hair follicles in an attempt to prevent disease overgrowth. So you will need to create a habit around your new alkaline diet so that it's easy to maintain because we don't want to revert back. So let's answer how to alkalize your body quickly. What you want to do is you want to eat foods that make the body more alkaline and that way your body won't need to eat its own hair to stay healthy. The most effective and easy way to do it is to start juicing. So buying a juicer and having like a carrot, celery, broccoli, cucumber and spinach juice. It's a great way to get good quantities of enzymes, nutrients and minerals into the body without expending large amounts of time and energy digesting the fiber. It will help restore your natural pH as long as you don't have too many acidic foods in your diet. Uh, an interesting point to remember is that as your body becomes more and more alkaline, vegetables and particularly vegetable juices become more pleasing to the palate. And literally the more alkaline you become, the more you enjoy alkaline foods. The takeaway point here is that you must maximize your intake of net alkaline producing food and minimize acid producing food. So how does this balance directly block DHT? So as we already mentioned, the 5-alpha reductase attaches onto testosterone to make dihydrotestosterone. Now, some interesting research has been carried out recently that found that the enzyme type 2,5-R is localized in the vertex and frontal scalp. However, it wasn't present in the occipital region, which is the lower back of the head where most bald men still have some hair. And this basically shows that type 2 5R is primarily responsible for the pattern in male pattern baldness, uh, where type 2 5R, so DHT will produce hair and loss of hair will be the result. When, what a different study discovered was that specifically type 2 5R works best in a very specific optimum pH range. And outside of this pH range, uh, this particular enzyme simply can't function and do its job binding to testosterone to make dihydrotestosterone, which is pretty fascinating. And the optimum pH um, for type 2 alpha reductase is pH 5 to 5.5, so very acidic. Now, it means that if our bodies are more acidic, pH 7 or below, then the enzyme, uh, the 5 alpha reductase, functions more efficiently, which ultimately creates more dihydrotestosterone and consequently we lose more hair. Now, when we alkalize our bodies, the enzyme can't do its work, so it won't be converting the testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Now, our bodies have evolved so that the foods we eat most often create the best conditions for our body. So we're talking like paleo style, so fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, fish, meat. And when we eat foods that we didn't evolve eating, such as processed and pasteurized, pasteurized foods like grains and dairy, uh, which you'll notice are all highly acidic, then our bodies are pushed out of balance and the enzymes start doing weird things like attacking our own bodies, resulting in hair loss. Now let me quickly emphasize this point because it is very important for actually getting results and regrowing your hair. The precise enzyme which scientific studies have found to be responsible for hair loss cannot function in an alkaline cellular environment.
Now, how does the acid alkaline balance directly block DHT? To create the alkaline environment and therefore stop hair loss, foods with alkaline values must be consumed more than foods with acidic values. And the very best way to do that, as we've just mentioned, is through vegetable juicing. And alkalizing can have a similar effect to taking Propecia, but instead of having the negative side effects of the drug, you get the positive natural side effects of being ultra healthy. So you've learned about probably the most powerful and safe natural DHT blocker in the world, uh, but this is only a small part of the story because high DHT levels are not the sole cause of hair loss. And in fact, there's something that is, well, even more important than blocking DHT, and that's DHT sensitivity. Uh, when you reduce the sensitivity of your hair follicles to dihydrotestosterone, you protect yourself against hair loss permanently. And men with pattern baldness don't have particularly high levels of DHT, they're just more sensitive to it. And there are a few natural and powerful ways to reduce your DHT sensitivity, and we're going to do a quick overview of those now. Now first is having a good balance of good and bad bacteria. In every body, there is a balance between good and bad bacteria, and in fact there are more bacterial cells making up the human body than human cells which is why it's so important to that these bacteria are beneficial to your health. Now, these billions of bacteria cells that make up part of us are called the microbiome. And modern life has kind of waged war on bacteria in the form of antibiotics, preservatives, chlorides, and so on. Now, you may be able to see with all these how microbiome has been damaged and can easily get out of balance. And one of these side effects of a damaged microbiome is that the autoimmune problems start arising with the body beginning to attack itself in strange, unusual ways. So, the autoimmune problem leads to DHT sensitivity, and luckily, there is a lot you can do to optimize your microbiome to reduce DHT sensitivity, including adding specific strains of probiotic bacteria to your diet, as well as specially made drinks that reduce bad bacteria. Uh, also, we've got delayed allergic reactions to food. Um, so, you know, we, many of us, have, we know about food allergies, but few people know that allergic reactions can also be delayed and less obvious. And because they're less obvious and harder to catch when they're delayed, uh, you may be in a constant state of inflammation, which can cause autoimmune problems from these reactions. For example, some people are sensitive to gluten, whilst others are sensitive to the nightshade family, including tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplant. It's very hard to tell what your body might not be responding to well if you aren't aware of this, and you may feel bloated, fatigued, and underslept if you do not understand why. So you can work out which foods you are sensitive to with an elimination diet, and that's when you basically uh, restrict certain foods for a period of time and then slowly reintroduce them and then monitor how you're feeling. And it's best performed under the watch of a trained physician. And then finally, we've got mechanical tensions of the scalp, and this is perhaps one of the most interesting theories regarding male pattern baldness. Um, as it implicates mechanical tension of the scalp as a major contributor. So just as with the skin, there are multiple layers of the scalp that play different roles. From outermost to innermost, these layers are skin um, and all these other things. So the, the gallia is, um, is a fibrous connected tissue that covers the entirety of the scalp from just above the eyebrows to behind the ears. And this tissue may actually be responsible for the progression of pattern balding. The tension theory states that the activation of the HRC5 protein, an androgen receptor coactivator, which improves the function of a cell's androgen receptors, may be triggered by the mechanical tension of the gallia. Why would activation of HIC5 mean hair loss? Because in an androgen receptor coactivator, the protein has been shown to induce androgen sensitivity in the hair follicles. So what's the solution? Reducing scalp tension. You can do this with scalp massages and exercises, uh, but there are also tools which are easier and more effective, and this includes scalp tension relaxers, such as our very own Groband. Now, by reducing tension, you can reduce your need for DHT blockers, such as those mentioned above. Now, there's no doubt that sensitivity to dihydrotestosterone plays a role in pattern baldness, and as such, by blocking DHT, you may be able to stop hair loss and even promote growth. However, this will only treat the problem temporarily, and that's why we urge you to find out the underlying cause of your hair loss and then target it directly. And you can do so by alkalizing your diet, but also by improving gut health, eliminating sensitivities and reducing scalp tension. And that was a lot of information, guys, and I hope you, I hope you stuck along to the end. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you very much.